this is an example, in fact it is, a Galilean designed telescope, also known as a refracting telescope. There's a lens in the front, that lens bends the light, which is refracting, and focuses it at a point towards the very end where there is another lens that then magnifies that light into a big image for the human eye to see. Through this type of telescope, Galileo was the first to see the craters on the moon, the rings of Saturn, spots on the sun, the first four moons of Jupiter. We owe a lot to Galileo and his telescope. However, it did come with some limitations. It was minimal in magnification, approximately 30 times. It distorted the colors in what is known as chromatic aberration. The Newtonian telescope, unlike Galileo's refracting telescope, is a reflecting telescope. Instead of using a lens at the front of the telescope, it uses a mirror that is curved, and that is at the back of the telescope. A mirror is much easier to make than a lens. It's easier to make it much larger, and thus have a much larger telescope that in turn is capable of much greater magnification. Both telescopes have some pros and some cons. Which is better, you may ask? Tonight we're going to have a good old-fashioned telescope duel. Let's go take a look at what we have. Tonight we're going to have a standoff between three telescopes, two of which are Newtonian design. This is a Maxitoff Newtonian telescope on a German equatorial mount. This is a Newtonian telescope on an altitude azimuth mount. When you pair those up like that, we call them we call it a Dobsonian. And this is a refracting telescope or a Galilean design telescope on a German equatorial mount. Each one has its own pros and cons. Each one excels in certain areas better than others uh, and vice versa. So we're going to do some experimenting tonight. Are we going to prove which one's the best? No, that's impossible. But we might be able to prove which ones are better in certain applications than others. Okay, it's approximately 8.30 in the evening and we are actively photographing with the Orion uh, EON quadruplet. And we're on the target. So we're going to try to make this as even of a comparison as possible. We will use the same camera, the same light pollution filter, the same guiding scope and software, as close to the same amount of exposure time as possible, and we'll see what we get. Okay, we're just going to let the rig do its thing here, and we'll come back and check it out. Oh, well, I'm going to be getting up in about an hour and a half and changing the telescopes and then again and then again for as long as I can keep it up. So I better get some sleep. Hmm. My name is Galileo Galilea. I am the inventor of the telescope. I was the first to see the lunar craters. I was the first to see uh, the the beautiful uh, rings of Saturn. I was the first to see uh, the moons of Jupiter. I was the first to see the spots on the sun. I proved the earth circled around the sun. I am known as the Papa P of astronomy. Inventor of the telescope. Indeed. Minimal magnification. Chromatic aberration. Narrow field of view. One has to wonder if one is looking at a lunar eclipse or a rainbow. I, Sir Isaac Newton, was knighted by Queen Anne 
for my contributions. Oh dear, did my wig fall off? For my contributions to humanity in the areas of astronomy, physics, calculus, other sciences, and even theology. My telescope design is far superior. Your telescope looks like a garbage can. Your telescope looks like a pe- <gasps> What a nightmare. I better go check the telescopes. Okay, we are on the Wizard Nebula using the 1300 millimeter focal length big black Newtonian telescope on the altitude azimuth mount, which then makes it a Dobsonian. And look at how that image has rotated. That is literally the result of lack of, of tracking with regards to the field rotation of the Earth. So we are going to now, um, then we're to slew over to the Andromeda galaxy and capture it. Okay, we are back and we have 12 minutes on the Andromeda galaxy and that's it. Software won't stack. You can see how much the Earth has rotated. And we are going to shut this down and we're gonna move over to the Maxitoff Newtonian Telescope. Well, it's the following day and we bounced back and forth, didn't we Shadow? Back and forth, back and forth all night long between telescopes and uh, I'm pretty tired. But we're processing them right now. Are you gonna help me Shadow? You, you have some adjustments you wanna help make as well? Yeah? Uh, Shadow is helping me process the uh, uh, photographs. I'm going to do as minimal, simple processing as possible. This is really meant to compare, so I'm not going to spend hours and hours on each one like I would on the prints above me that I took, but uh, we'll have something to compare here and uh, stay tuned. Okay, Shadow, we're done, aren't we? We are done processing all these pictures. We're going to show them to you in order, first starting with the Dobsonian telescope, then moving to the Maxitoff Newtonian telescope, and then finally to the uh, refracting Orion Quadruplet telescope. And we'll uh, compare the images, and then I'm going to do a little slideshow showing uh, two or three of the best images that I have captured from each of the telescopes. With the Dobsonian, there's massive magnification and a tremendous amount of data in a short period of time. But even with three second subs, you can see star trailings. The Dobsonian on the Andromeda galaxy. I cannot fit the entire galaxy in the field of view. There's only 13 minutes of data here though, so given that short period of time, it's quite amazing. The Wizard Nebula with the Orion Quadruplet Refracting Telescope. Big improvement, pinpoint stars. The Andromeda Galaxy with minimal post-processing using the quadruplet. The Maxitoff Newtonian on the Wizard Nebula, this one clearly is the winner. As with the Dobsonian, I could not fit Andromeda in the full field of view, but the detail is incredible. 